Sanmana, Dumelang, good morning and welcome to our service this morning. This is a combined service where we all come together as a community to celebrate and give thanks for the courageous young women and men in our church, our youth and children, emerging co-laborers, and as I call them this morning, they are laborers, emerging laborers in God's plentiful harvest. Our service this morning is dedicated to the youth and children of our church as Runbeck Methodist Church, but also our country and the communities around us. So welcome and hope that you will have a beautiful service with us. The service is structured rather differently. We will have voices of our own youth sharing their current struggles, just as the youth of 1976 had to stand up and rise against the struggles of their own time. We now allow our young people to share their own struggles, but in this allow us as a congregation, young and old, a moment to pray together and place these struggles before God's presence. We'll also hear voices from the adults in our congregation sharing messages of love and support. And these messages then will follow with a reflection that will tie everything together. Allow me to say that our sermon this morning will be through music will be through the sharing and the voices of both young people and adults of our church. And so I, let's hear God's voice through all the messaging and please stay until the end of the video. Please join us then as we start this service with a praise and worship song that has been selected for us by our young people. Let us call everyone, call all the family and let us come together and worship for God. Let's sing. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you and come before your presence in this service. You are Alpha, you are Omega, and there is none like you. 
modimo o halalelang re le boha ha wena o dumelletse hore kana go tsohle re be le monyetla mo re tlatlang ho wena re tlisa ditanki le ditebo ho wena re tlisa dikopo tsa rona ho wena me re tlile ho tla amohela matla matsha a tswang ho wena bless us in the service in this combined service as together a community of Runbeck, we spend a moment to give thanks and praise for the young people and children in our church and in our community. We know, Lord God, that they are a gift from you and the kingdom of heaven is for people such as them. Allow us at this moment to be of one mind Allow us at this moment to be of one heart, that as we come before you, the messages that come forth may not only be for our young people, but may also be for all ages and generations in our congregation. May your Holy Spirit bind us together. May your loving presence warm our hearts and may you give us a right and willing spirit to serve you in the newness of life. Bless the service, bless all reflections and messages that will be shared by both the young people and our older members of the congregation, adults who have taken time to share words of encouragement and support. May all the words and the preaching of your word find a place in our hearts. We ask all this in Christ Jesus' name, who taught us a prayer, and we sing together the Lord's Prayer. I've been asked to just give a, a short word of thanks to the youth, of gratitude um, to the youth in our church. And just thinking about the youth in our church, um, it really depends on which service you go to as to who you think of as youth. But these, the youth in, in the Randburg uh, church are, include and encompass those who are teenagers all the way up to young adults. Um, and sometimes, um, amusingly, we find that some of our youth are, are almost quite middle-aged and that makes uh, people like me a little bit jealous because I'd love to think of myself as somebody in the youth for many, many decades. I think when I think of the youth, um, I think of all their, their zeal and energy, their laughter, their hugs and their smiles. And I suppose during this time of lockdown, that's something we really miss is seeing that that energy and that vigor and that love for the Lord that's so obvious in, in young people. I think of them participating in the youth band and particularly leading the youth services when we really see them come to the fore. But I also think of the days where they sit on the left-hand side of the church and they are so integral to being part of the church family. 
And if they're not sitting there, everybody asks where they are because they are very, very much a part of who we all are. When I think of being a, a young person myself in the church, I, I'm very grateful um, that the Lord has called these young people into to Ran Neff because it's important for us as at that stage of our lives to make the commitment to the Lord. It helps to guide us all through life. It helps us to be a guide to others because you, young people go all over. They tend to be more easily accessible to others, I think, um, less set in their ways, and they can shine that light for Christ wherever they are. And so we're very, very grateful for our young people. And finally, I think I'd like to say, as a mother whose daughter was very actively involved in the youth at Van Neff, I'm very grateful for what that did for her. This was a place she could come at the end of a week um, to have fun with her friends who were like-minded, who could anchor her in her beliefs again after some stormy happenings in the week or just lots and lots of secular input during the week. And to be able to come and have fun, reach out to others through Holiday Club and other youth activities really anchored her so that when she went off to Cape Town, I could trust and believe that my child could cope with what the world would fling at her as the years went by and tempt her with because she had that firm foundation which was in the Lord Jesus and which was built and strengthened at Randburg Methodist. So thank you to the youth. We love you. We miss all your hugs and your smiles and we'll see you again hopefully not too far away. Hi, what's your name? Caleb. And how old are you? Nine years old. And what grade are you in? I'm in grade four. Now tell me, Caleb, what have you enjoyed about lockdown? Zoom meetings with my cousins. And what have you not enjoyed about lockdown? That some schools get homeschooling and some don't, and I'm one that gets homeschooling. And um, what makes you scared during lockdown? That my granny, my grandpa and my great granny might catch coronavirus. And um, what are you hoping will happen at the end of lockdown? What are you looking forward to? Going to school and wearing a mask. Actually. Anything else? Yeah, going to... back to school. And what do you do when you feel scared about things in coronavirus? Hug my mum. Ubu kutaza abandu abasha ebandlin. Mukbala ingwa dinga matheu chapter nine verses thirty five to thirty eight. Sibege umunwe vesin ga thirty six efunde ga kanje. Kepa ebo na iskogu wabane si henga azo. Mukbaza zikata zegi le zilaga zegi le njenge zimvesin ge na malus. Verse thirty seven. Wai se tigba fundi bakhe. Uguvuna bukulu kodwa izi sebenzi zi ingo sana. Ngifizu guti kubanda basha ujesu kristu babona be isfwele. Uba nesi he gubo, uba nozuelu. Ubo agafuni ngabo uguba bashali be izi mvu ezi ngena malusi. Kepa ukulu manamafundi bake uguba isi vuno sikulu kepa izi sebenzi zi ngane. Kanja alu nati bandwa basha bandleni sino msebenzo uwenze sivuno isikulu siga kristu. No matina si ingo sana. Jenga banda basha, haba pegene nezi nzelele kipile nguetu, ezi fana nunga sebenzi, ezi dagamizwa, uktangala, ubutina, inginde ziondanga, imizwa yugu zbulala, indele mnyama. Nogunye, ukristu jesu nesi henati, wasketa, wasbize la ingunzo inugubasa hambe zino malusi, ongui. Lezi zifunde zilandelayo, zizo sizi njele inugubasi kutale, futi sikumbu leuguti, singaba ketiweyo. In what did chapter 7, verse 6? 1 Peter, chapter 5, verses 5 to 10. Habakkuk, chapter 3, verses 2 and 19. John 15, verse 6. Matthew 22, verse 14. Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 4 to 5. Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10. And 1 Peter, Chapter 2, verse 9, of Fundega Ganji Singval.
kepa ni nani lushango liketiweyo ubu pristo bubu kosi isizwe singwele abanta bazu ziweyo uguze nishumaye lubu kosi balo wa nibiza nipume ebu mnyamen ningene egu kanyini kwa ke ogu mangali sayo kwa nga nangali nyanga ya banda basho ngulungu langani tina ni hambisa njele ni akai begile yonjalo amen okay hello what's your name Gemma and how old are you seven and what grade are you in Grade one. And why are you enjoying lockdown? Because I'm staying at home. And what do you not like about lockdown? Everybody dying. And what are you scared about? If my granny's going to die. Why would your granny die? Because of coronavirus. And uh, what can you do when you're scared? Lie in my bed. Okay, and um, what are you looking forward to after coronavirus is finished? School. What, are you missing school? Yeah. What are you missing about school? My friends okay. and teacher. And anything else? And what should you do to be safe? Stay at home. Anything else you want to say? No. Hello, Randburg Methodist Church and YouTube viewers. Thank you for joining the Sunday service. We would like to make a few prayer requests. I would like to pray for those who are sick, whether it's the corona or any other virus, and I hope that you do get better. I'd also like to pray for the homeless and those without food, um, as well as us, the youth, specifically the grade 7s and the grade 12s, who are going back to school or who have already gone back to school this week. Um, uh, finally, I'd also like to pray for you to stay home and be protected and stay safe. And hopefully we'll see each other soon. Thank you. Enjoy your Sunday. Bye. Sunday greetings, everyone. My name is Portia Chawatama. I'm one of the society stewards here at Randbeck Methodist Church, and I'm also a parent. As we celebrate National Youth Month, allow me to share a few words with you. We pride ourselves in the blessing of a diverse and vibrant youth in our midst. You are here as part of our congregation because God set you apart. God appointed you, God equipped you, God prepared you, and God loves you. 1 Peter 2 verse 9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare praise of him who called you out of darkness into his light. 2 Timothy 2 verse 22, flee also from youthful lusts, pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord out of pure hearts. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13, watch, stand fast in faith, be brave, be, be strong. Enjoy and embrace being part of this era. We are raising the future elders of God's church. The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Shared blessings and happy youth month. One of the struggles, one of the biggest struggles that um, I have right now during these times is the fact that I'm back at school and just coping with all the work and being not at home I guess just being in an environment where I'm actually forced to work after this whole lockdown thing it's just hard to get back into the groove of things um, I'd like to please ask the congregation to pray for me and my family and my schoolmates that we all just stay safe and we can make it through this tough time. Hi, I'm Natavo and as some of you know, I'm studying chemical engineering and being a student, it's not easy during a pandemic, but apart from that, um, uh, finding funding has also been very tough and, you know, even getting a bursa is also difficult. So I'm praying for funding to complete my studies and studies. Thank you and may God bless you. 
Hi guys, I'm Norma and I am in matric. I'm behind in some of my subjects. Please pray for me so that I will pass matric well and get into university. Please also pray for all the learners that are going back to school and for all of my teachers. Thank you. May God bless you, keep you safe and healthy. Hi guys, my name is CJ Nyamboza. How I'm struggling with this coronavirus is I cannot, I want to go outside where my father and mother go, but then I cannot go. Please pray for me so I cannot die, so I can have a peaceful life. Hi guys, my name is Julie Joy Nyamboza and my struggles are not focusing on my homework and also I struggle to sleep at night. Well, I can't focus on my homework that much because, well, I get distracted very easily. And also, I for the past few months, I've just been struggling to sleep for some reason. So may you please pray for me so that I can focus on what I do and also so I have a peaceful sleep. Hi guys, my name is Blessing Yamboza and the things I have been struggling with so far is my goals because I cannot achieve majority of my goals due to we have to stay at home. And also the other thing I've been struggling with is my online schooling. The workload is way too much and some of the lessons we I tend to fall behind and some of the work is really difficult to cope with. And I'll just like a prayer request that you pray for the youth in general since we are the future and also pray for the whole nation, especially with the things that are going on around us in the world. And also may please pray that for each and everyone's help. Thank you. Matthew chapter 9 verses 35 to 38. The work is a few. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. We come now to our reflections as we conclude the sermon part. And I believe our sermon already started with our young people as they were sharing their own prayer points, sharing their own struggles during this time, but also our adults who have shared words of encouragement and words of love and support to our young people. The selection was clear that it's people who, some of the people who in the recent past have taken interest and have worked closely with the different youth formations in our church. But I'm mindful that we would have had a much fuller celebration had it been a normal time, um, as we now know that we are now learning to live in a new normal. But this call for celebration is one that is intentional, that we take this time as the Runbeck Methodist Church to give thanks to God for the gift that the young people of our church are to us. Not only as a gift of presence, but a gift of a promise that God will continue to the journey and the work of ministry through the generations that the emerging um, laborers or co-workers that are emerging amongst us through the youth and children. This is a moment where we too see how special we are as a congregation and as a people in God's eyes that God continues then within us to bring new energy and to bring forth new, um, new generations of believers in Christ Jesus and whose hearts yearn for Christ. But as we celebrate, I'm mindful that we do so in the reality of struggles as our youth have shared. And the truth is that 
this month of June remind us that as we give thanks for courageous young people, but we also don't lose sight of the struggles our young people face daily in their lives. And many struggles have been countered before, as you may have listened then to the sharings of our young people. Struggles of hunger, struggles of unemployment, struggles of education, um, struggles of mental um, health illnesses, um, worries that have been brought about by COVID-19. It is amazing just how much it has impacted on our young people, bringing forth fears and anxieties, and sometimes often looked past and not focused on because we assume they may not have a full understanding. But I'm, I'm hopeful that from the sharings we received this morning, we are now mind, more mindful as, as to how it has impacted on our young people and their experience of life right now. But today our service comes that although we have these struggles that our young people face and these struggles which are real in the eyes of young people, but also in our eyes as adults, some of them, we may, they may seem small, but in their eyes as young people, they are real and they have an impact on how then they live out their youth and how they become active citizens and active participants in the world. And in the service, we call us to refocus and look with compassion at our youth and children and their experiences and see this as a call, a missional call, as God's move called for us to a ministry that sometimes is neglected of youth and children in our country, in our churches, and in our congregation. The same way, and the call for us to look with compassion, is to look the same way as Jesus did when he saw the crowd in the streets, in the different towns and villages, when he was in mission, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 38, which is our lectionary reading, we are told that Jesus went about proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, healing every sickness. But as he was busy with his own mission and the mission of God that he sent with, he is mindful of the reality of a people that he's serving. And we're told that Jesus walking through the streets, he saw a sad state of a harassed and helpless people. Much like the reality, not only of our youth today, but of our country and the world. With the different hashtags that we have seen emerging, seemingly we have moved through the tide of Corona that is still there. But somehow there are much more urgent matters that continue to call our attention to show how broken, harassed and helpless God's people are in our midst. And with the hashtag, the Black Lives Matter, the Me Too, uh, am, am I Next, expressing issues that have shown how many lives are oppressed, harassed, and many people are helpless. Even our young girls, we, with the recent spate again of the killings of young girls and children. And we are told in this text that Jesus sees this. Jesus looks. And in looking, this is not just one who observes without any sense of movement. We are told he looks with compassion, a deep sense of worry and care. And this is a sign. In normal, when, when the writers of, 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 of the gospel speak about Jesus observing human need and human struggle, it is always with a word that moves Jesus' heart or that expresses a deep link with the heart of Jesus and that with the realities of humanity. And instead of just seeing a helpless people, Jesus sees an opportunity for change, an opportunity for mission. And as we celebrate, even in these challenging times, to be young and challenging times, to be alive in our country and the world, our, our, our gospel reminds us this morning that we should know that we do not do, do so without a God who sees what we're going through. But rather, God sees not only 
the victims of this reality of the struggles of our time. But God also sees agents of change amongst us. And specifically to young people, as I call us this morning that we celebrate you as emerging laborers in God's harvest, that the call for this moment and this time is for us to see you as people as we celebrate. The reason we celebrate is that we do not see you as victims, not only as victims of the realities of a past or a current um, system that does not seem to favor you or does not always seem to bring the fullness of life that you wish for. But rather, you are also God's agents of change, the future change that you want to see in the world and the change our parents and past generations have been praying for. You are celebrated because I believe you are answered prayers. As Jesus called his own disciples that they should pray that God may give them more laborers because the harvest is plenty. Looking at the struggles and the pain of God's people, Jesus says to his disciples, that is an opportunity of service. But the problem is that you will need people, hands, feet, eyes, and ears, which are ready then to labor for the kingdom of God. And I believe the reason we are called then to celebrate and give thanks this morning for you as young people and children is because you are the answered prayers of this church. You are the answered prayers of our country that there will be young men and women fear, who fear and love the Lord, whose heart is in the Lord and who in their own way are called then to change and bring about the change that we pray for, the kingdom change that will outlive any time that will give clear and life-changing results for future generations. So we trust you. And you have been chosen and loved by God. And your being energetic for God becomes our hope as a, as a church and as a community. But also the reminder that all of us in the church, young and old, are those whom then Jesus then, as he looks around our own situation, Jesus calls for us also to look with compassion. But not only to look with compassion, be ready to serve for the change that we all pray for and the change that is kingdom driven. And when Jesus speaks then to his disciples, he sees the struggle, but he also sees an opportunity for mission. or sees an opportunity for a new crop that will bring the change that the world and the villages of this time, but also of our own time, are praying for. The change our country and world begins now, and all of us, young and old, male or female, light or dark-skinned, all of us who believe in Christ Jesus and who have received the Holy Spirit are called to. And one of the hymns remind us that the call then to this change is a call for a harmonious living. The kingdom of God is justice and love. One of the favorite hymns, our English hymnals. But also it is picked up from the writing of the prophet Isaiah who speaks of a new heaven and a new earth. And when he speaks about it, he speaks about the harmonious living between beasts of the field and those animals which may be vulnerable. But then in the presence of of those beasts, they become safe and they feel safe because there's a harmonious living and there's no, um, there's no moment where one feels unsafe in the hands of others. And that's the kind of kingdom we are called to, a kingdom of love, a kingdom of justice, a kingdom of joy, a kingdom of equality, a kingdom where all share and participate in the goodness and abundance of life that God has called for us to have. And our young people, I call for us this morning to remember that you too are participants in realizing this kingdom. You are not just spectators, but you are those then whom God calls you then to join in the mission field. But the responsibility then is for those who have already been in the mission field, our young, our older generation, that we take then the young people in our wing and we journey with them. And some will ask then, how can this be? How can we change the world? How is it possible that the struggles that we face, because some of them leave us helpless, 
some seem to be much greater than the reality. They seem much more greater and they cause fear and cause one then to feel like they should shy away. But rather we are reminded as Jesus then sends out his disciples as we read further in chapter 10. Jesus then reminds the disciples that they have been given authority. We too are called then to labor in God's plentiful harvest. A harvest of a broken people, but a harvest which is an opportunity of healing and transformation. We have been given the spirit that empowers us to have the authority to call upon the change that we want, to work towards the change, to heal every disease, and even diseases that may seem to be unable to be healed, diseases of the heart, diseases of physical diseases, even including COVID-19. Our call to mission is for us to heal our land, heal our people, and heal the wounds, not only of the past, but also who wounds that continue to grow in our current time. The Black Lives Matter remind us of past wounds that we too as South Africans are continuing to experience. Wounds of apartheid and wounds of racism, and which too have a way in how they then impact on the livelihood and quality of life of our current generation and the new, um, the new laborers of God in mission. So the call for us is to even heal the racist tendencies that may exist amongst us in the country, in our churches and in our communities. Allow our young people to learn the ability not to be colorblind, but to be able to love each other regardless of what may seem to separate. To be able to know that all lives matter and all are equal in the eyes of God. And that is possible through us. That is possible not only through the young people, but also the adults in our church. And therefore, Jesus reminds us, the harvest is plenty. Much change is needed. And the question that the many would ask then, when do we start and where do we start? And Jesus speaks to the disciples and says, you're going to go out now. The sending out of the disciples does not wait for any opportune time. Jesus says, in the struggle, in the presence of deep struggle, in the presence of deep helplessness and pain. And I'm imagining that the disciples themselves have experienced this pain and may be carriers of that pain. But Jesus then says to them, you are not victims, but you're agents of change. And they are sent out too. So for us, the kingdom of God, the presence of the kingdom of God, and the building and the formation of the kingdom of God does not start tomorrow or does not wait then for the young people to grow to a certain age. Then you can entrust them with the work. But rather the work of ministry starts now. With the young Sunday, the youngest Sunday school scholar to the oldest um, church member, in our congregation. God and through Jesus Christ reminds us that at Pentecost, we have been given the Spirit. We have been given the Holy Spirit to have authority over all that is evil, have the ability to bring the change and be the new change that our world needs. But remember that the harvest is plenty. There will be many mindsets that need to be changed. There will be many practices and habits that need to be changed. There'll be many um, worldviews that require to be changed. There'll be many laws that need to be changed. So the harvest being plenty, Jesus then reminds the disciples that they're not enough laborers. But at this moment, as Randberg Methodist Church, we are reminded that there are laborers that we can now groom and grow and nurture. As we celebrate them, that we also nurture them into the agents of change, future leaders and future, um, uh, future ambassadors of God's kingdom, those who will stand for the justice of God, those who will stand for the truth of God, those who will be love in their presence, love personified, and those who will be able to care. But they will learn these through us, as older laborers, those who have been in the journey longer. And sometimes I need to remind myself that I myself am st still part of the younger generation of laborers. But I thank God that I had a number of laborers who had been in the field for long, 
who have been in the harvest for long and who took me in under the wing. And one of them reminded me one not so long ago that one of the joys is not in seeing themselves um, in through me or rather seeing what they've done right. But one of the joys for any laborer who has worked with emerging laborers is when they see those who emerge through their guidance and through their teachings become better laborers and better servants of God's kingdom. So I call on our adults also to remember then the call for the harvest being plenty is not only for the world, but also for your call and your mission to young people. Here are our youth and children. And as Jesus calls you to look onto them with compassion, go and heal them. You've heard their call. You've heard their um, prayer items. And now God calls us today, here and now, that we each now take a moment, pray for our youth, pray for our country, allow God to use each and every one of us. And to our young people, those who in the young adult phase, some of you come to church and there's this moment where I feel there's a gap with us coming together and being part of a bigger whole. And maybe during this time, it's a call for us to remember that there is a role that we are to play. There may be other laborers in this vineyard, but there'll never be a laborer like you with your own talents and gift. Do not rob us of the opportunity to share in your talents and gifting. So join us in this fold. Offer to the work of God. When there's a call for volunteer work, right now we've seen, we've had to now rely on electronic means of doing services. How many of our young people in the church can actually operate these things and do editing and work behind the scenes of production? This is a call for you this time to come and serve and emerge as a laborer in God's vineyard. And all are welcome to serve God's kingdom. All are welcome to serve God's people. And all we need is a willing heart, an eye to see, a heart to feel, and the hands and feet ready to serve. And all we need for the journey we've already received through the Holy Spirit. Thank you for allowing yourselves to be part of this beautiful community of Randbeck to all our young people. But also we thank God for the laborers who have continued the work till thus far. Those generations who have been in this church longer than we can imagine, but have also made it possible that in future generations can labor. And the call for us this month as we celebrate our young people and children in the church is that we should now celebrate the beauty of all of God's creation in our church and the beauty of all that waits for us and that, that is provided for us to be able then to serve together. May God bless us, may God keep us, and may our young people have a blessed youth month, and may we all be ready to roll up our sleeves. After this, we will need to be able to come back and to say to God and give thanks to God for the work that has been done, even through lockdown. May God bless you, keep you, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. And as we pray, I call on us then to remember back again from where we started in the service. We are co-laborers in God's plentiful harvest, shared their struggles as young emerging laborers, shared their prayer points, those that they wish for us to pray with and for them. And now give us a moment that we all in our hearts pray and call on to God to help us. So at this time, feel free to pause this video at this moment to pray together as a family and to call on the names of all the young people and children in your family, with your friends and relatives, and just place them in God's care. Let us pray. Merciful and loving God, creator of heaven and earth, parent, friend, guide and protector, we thank you, Heavenly Father, that we are able to call you all these things as you continue to walk this journey of life and the journey of faith with us. 
We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you that when you look upon us, you look upon us with compassion. And when you see the sad state of our time, you are not unfazed by it. You are not discouraged by it, but rather you look on us with compassion. You look on us with deep care and you seek for us to have life and have life in abundance. But we are mindful of the challenge, Lord God, that you place before us, that the change that is needed and the realization of your kingdom lies in our ability to serve and our willingness to serve. It lies, Heavenly Father, in that we open our hearts and our minds and our lives to you for service and that you may use us, Heavenly Father, to heal, to transform, to call out any evil spirit, any evil, drive out any evil amongst us as your people and to bring the peace and the joy that we pray for. So at this time, we place before you our land, South Africa. We place before you the world. We place before you our young people and children who, Heavenly Father, many generations before had prayed for a different reality, but sometimes it seems like it's the state of affairs do not point to the prayers of our parents and generations before us. But we thank you that you remind us that you have answered the prayers for new emerging leaders, young people who love and fear you, those who seek to spread and proclaim your kingdom in the world, who have come, Heavenly Father, not only to preach the word, but to live the world, live the word and to show your presence in the world. So use us as your people for the transformation of our country and the world. May you grow us as your congregation, together young and old, to work in the plentiful harvest without tiring. May your Holy Spirit well up within us a new fire for you and for your people. And may we be able to witness to the power of your Holy Spirit through us and in us. May your world be a better place for our young people and children. And may you use your church, may you use your people as the hands and feet, the eyes and ears to realize the kingdom that you have called for us to live in, of love, of peace, unity, and abundant life. We thank you and we bless you and ask all this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. We call on us now at this time for our offering and tithes to the work of the Lord as we continue to offer all gifts to the service of God in God's plentiful harvest. At this moment, we also give thanks for the gifts and talents that you continue to offer as members of this congregation to the service of the Lord and God's people. Let us give thanks. We thank you, dear God, for these gifts. We thank you, dear God, for these offerings and tithes given for the service of your people and the expansion of your kingdom in the world. May you grow your people. One day se la pobata te kona, o tamsangeli se ibanda la ko. Se abonga o se lungileyo, se abonga kumkani kumkani. That no ban kunukule ngwele, kubenga ati ngezinyi kati kona lakunipa kona. 
kodwa sibona wena unkulunkulu ngazo zonke ikhathi wandisa siyakubulela unkulunkulu engcele with the gifts that we have given this morning but we also Lord God we thank you that you have enabled us to be able to give in this manner we ask that you bless them and bless your church in Christ Jesus name we pray amen and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore amen God bless you and may you have a blessed week ahead